Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. The 2022 model year for Airstream has just started and today I'm gonna to feature the all new 2022 Airstream Caravelle 19CB. Take you around this trailer. We're going to go through the interior and then we'll do the exterior features and give you a little bit of lessons on how some of the stuff works as well as some of the features. This trailer is 19 foot 5 inches from the rear bumper to the center of the ball and it is eight foot wide. The interior width is seven foot seven and the exterior height to the top of the air conditioning is nine foot seven, giving you an interior headroom of six foot seven inches. The dry weight, this is the weight before factory options, before cargo, is 4,000 pounds. And the gross vehicle weight rating, that's the most a trailer could weigh, is 5,000 pounds. That gives you a net cargo carrying capacity of 1,000 pounds. And that gives you 1,000 pounds of factory options to put on, water, luggage, gear, whatever you're gonna put inside. The hitch weight of the trailer is 550 pounds. That's 550 pounds before you add factory options and your luggage. And the MSRP of this trailer before factory options and destination is $68. $800. This has the convection microwave upgrade. So it comes standard with a regular microwave and most of the customers will upgrade that to the convection microwaves that have different cooking options. That's $475. This also has a solar charging system. It has a 90 watt solar panel on the roof and Airstream includes AGM batteries. Those are absorbed glass mat batteries and each battery is 80 amp hours a piece, giving you a total of 160 amp hours hours of battery capacity. And then this also has the window awning package. There's window awning in the back and the side. They're very functional. They really keep the interior temperature of the trailer down if you're camping in a sunny area. And aesthetically, they're beautiful. I'm gonna bring you right inside this trailer, but let me just total up this MSRP. Uh, the 475 was the uh, microwave, the solar is 2100, the window awning is 1350, and the national destination charge is 1650, giving you a total MSRP of 74375. Let's head inside. This is one of the more open floor plans that Airstream offers on the small trailers. See up front, it has this beautiful dinette in the panoramic window. So when you sit at the dinette, you can see all the way out. So people love this as a workstation area and for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But this dinette also folds into a bed that's 40 inches by 91. So you can easily sleep two kids and two adults if you really need to. It's plenty of a space for them. There's a center galley kitchen with a deep stainless steel sink, two burner cooktop with ventilation, upper roof locker here. This has the optional convection microwave upgrade and plenty of storage below. On this side, there is a pantry storage, bulk storage below, a ledge here to put items up, some hooks, a dry erase board, and then it has a 4.3 cubic foot Novacool refrigerator with freezer up top. And this refrigerator is a compressor style refrigerator. It runs off of 12 volt DC power when you're in transit and when you're boondocking. And when you plug into electricity at a campground, it switches to AC current 120 volt. There's storage below and above. And in the back area, there is a 48 inch by 76 inch long double bed Beautiful premium mattress that Airstream gives you, pillow top, memory foam. And it also has a privacy curtain that pulls across to make this area a little bit more private if you're gonna change back here. And at the foot of the bed, there is a television that swivels around for your living space or to view when you're in bed. Here's a wardrobe in the center. It's very deep, has a rod so you can hang clothes if you needed to. 
a bathroom faucet area. This is nice if someone's in the toilet shower area, you can still come out here and brush your teeth and wash your hands. And then in the bathroom, this is a dry bath. So the toilet is separate from the shower. And the Caravel series is available in four different floor plans. They make a 16 RB, the RB stands for rear bed. 19 CB, we're in right now. CB stands for corner bed. They make a 20 FB, which stands for front bed, and a 22 FB, which is a front bed. And these floor plans repeat themselves in the Bambi series. Both model lines are just as popular as another. The Caravel is the upgraded model. It has a lot of additional features and amenities for someone that has a little bit more experience or expectation for their camping lifestyle. So there's things in this trailer that are available here, not in the Bambi. The cooktop ventilation I mentioned before is one of the features you get in the Caravel, but not in the Bambi. Ducted air conditioning is a feature of the Caravel. So this has intakes here and duct work throughout the trailer. It's called quiet stream air conditioning. It reduces the noise level of the air conditioning. Also increases the headroom because the box does not stick down. You also get porthole style windows and you get the Airstream windows in the back and side where the Bambi series has hair brand windows, very high quality windows, but they don't open as far as the Airstream windows. You get fantastic fans with motorized lid, rain sensor, variable speed. On the Bambi series will be manual open, no rain sensor, no thermostat control. The roof lockers in the Caravel are deeper and larger and they can handle more weight. Uh, the Bambi series has a timbre door style cabinet, a little bit less weight, a little bit less storage. The whole idea is to reduce the weight. You get recessed lighting in the Caravel, and the Bambi will have lighting like this throughout the trailer that sticks down and has the switches built into it. These lights are also dimmable on the Caravel and they're not on the Bambi series. And then there's a different decor. The decor style and preference is different on the Caravel than it would be the Bambi. You have two different choices of seating on the Caravel. We have tungsten, which is a, almost like a satin black, and there's pewter, which is a satin color pewter. This is all made from ultra fabrics. Uh, another feature you get in the Caravel that's not available in the Bambi is a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And that inverter will allow you to run dedicated electrical outlets off of your battery system. So if you wanted to plug in a laptop computer on the dinette and plug it into an electrical outlet, you could turn on your inverter here. There's gonna be a delay when you turn it on to, until it powers up your outlet, but that will give you 1000 watts of power for small electronic devices. Uh, so that's a nice feature that you get in the Caravel, but not available on the Bambi. Also, the stereo system is upgraded on the Caravel. You get four speakers and a subwoofer. Bambi will have two speakers. And you get the JL audio upgrade when you go to the Caravel. They give you a Blu-ray player. Bambi does not have that. Another feature you get in the Caravel, you get Ocean Air roller shades and the Bambi will have aluminum slatted blinds. They're both beautiful. Uh, the Caravel would have uh, that as an upgrade. Back here, there's a digital thermostat that's available on the Caravel standard that controls your air conditioning and electric heat pump and furnace. On the Bambi series, it will be dials on the air conditioning and it will have a analog controlled furnace control. Back in the bathroom, the Bambi for weight reduction will have a plastic toilet. This has a porcelain style toilet. And then on the exterior, you get heavy duty rock guards that protect the front body on the Caravel and not available on the Bambi. You get a metal battery box. The Bambi will have a plastic battery box. You get an aluminum entry step on the Caravel will be steel on the Bambi. 
You get Sumbrella upgraded material on the Caravelle for the awning and awnings. Those window awnings that are optional on this are not optional on a Bambi. You also get a rear bumper with rear bumper storage on the Caravelle and you get never lube hubs. The bearings, you will have to repack your bearings as the recommended maintenance. And you get shock absorbers on this trailer as well. So there is a considerable amount of upgrades that you get for the difference in price, which is approximately $11 thousand uh, dollars when you compare apples to apples. Now that I gave you a little bit of the lay of the land inside the trailer and some of the features, I'm going to go over how on some of this stuff works in here so you can understand the trailer a little bit better and decide if this is the model for you. Starting back here, we'll go back to the bedroom, we'll work our way up. You got an overhead roof locker over the bed. If you notice the interior aluminum skin on all the Airstreams is the same grade and thickness aluminum that's on the exterior of the trailer and the same finish. It's beautiful, it's easy to clean and uh, it doesn't hold any odors, which is great. The window treatments on this side are curtains that give you a little bit more privacy. This is a porthole style window and you can just snap that in and snug into bed for the night and you have your privacy. Same thing in the back. This back window opens all the way up. And there's three different heights you could snap it into. And you have an insect screen, which is removable in case of emergency. Airstream includes the bed pillows and then there's decor sets, a different decor set for the Bambi versus the Caraval. There's lights over this cabinet, which run on 12 volt. So this has those two AGM batteries if you get the solar charging system. That's what's powering up the trailer right now. If you plug into electricity, the battery will be charged off the onboard battery charger, allowing you to run the lights longer. If you park out in the sun, the solar charging system will charge those batteries, which in turn will run your light. So the solar charging system does not run anything. It charges the battery. The battery runs these items. The ductwork in the ceiling is all, you could spin in different directions. You could shape, shut off certain vents and dedicate more air to other parts of the trailer. The intakes grates are here. You just have to clean them out periodically. A lot of lint from towels and clothing will get stuck up in here. Unscrew them, wash them in the sink, let them dry, put them back up. If they're clogged, that will make your air conditioning fail or not run properly. Back here above the bed, there is two USB charge ports here with this cubby. Allow you to throw your phone and your GoPro up here at night to, for allowed to charge. And the TV's plugged into an inverter outlet. So this outlet will work when you're plugged into shore power or it will also work when you turn on your inverter system. And the TV's hooked through HDMI up to the front stereo and cable. So if you go to a campground, you hook, it, hook right into their park cable. But there is also an onboard antenna that uh, gives you radio reception and television uh, reception. And there is an antenna booster here off to the side that you would just press in to boost that signal up so you could get reception. Here at our dealership in Millstone Township, New Jersey, we could get over 20 stations off the, over the air from Philadelphia and New York City. Of course, we're about an hour from both cities on these TVs. So it's, it's pretty impressive. If you go to a campground and you can use their cable, great. Just plug right in and you're ready to go. Fantastic fan in the bedroom has a privacy shade as well as a sunshade built into it that slides across. The insect screen that's built into it is removably just unsnap if you need to clean the blades off. And there's variable speed control. You just set your speed first, so we'll put it on two. Set your temperature. This is room temperature, let's go a little bit cooler. And then when the lid opens, we want the fan on, I'm just gonna hit the lid open button here. The lid pops up, the little button pops up, tells the fan to come on. I can change the speed. I could change the temperature. All right, here's our room temperature. If it gets any hotter to here, that fan's gonna kick back on. Raindrop hits the little sensor up top. It's gonna shut the lid down and disable the fan so your bed doesn't get wet. 
And then when you're all done, you can hit close lid. You can manually spin against the motor if you had battery failure and you needed to close the lid. Underneath the bed, there is storage here. And this is a great opportunity for you to see the type of materials. This is Italian light ply uh, plywood here that is used for all the construction of all the cabinets. There is no particle board or melamine or anything like that in this construction. It's plywood and laminate. This is not a decal. Uh, it's common practice in the RV industry to use stickers and particle board for cabinets. Airstream has a different approach and these cabinets last a very, very long time. Slide these out, you got bins, you got one more all the way back here. Think about this, take these bins, bring them in the house, put your stuff in there, carry them back down the trailer and throw them in and you're ready to go on your trip. Just makes it a lot easier. Underneath here is that storage we talked about before. This is a great spot for your smoothie maker, your coffee maker, a large kitchen type appliances you could put in here because it goes up and over the wheel well. It's really deep. You could put a lot of stuff in here. Believe me, I've seen our customers come in for service and I know what they have stored in certain compartments and they do a great job utilizing all the storage that Airstream gives you. Underneath that is a vent area for this refrigerator cabinet to breathe a little bit. The great thing about these compressor style refrigerators is they don't throw off heat inside the trailer. A propane absorption style refrigerator does emerge a little bit of heat inside so you're fighting against that heat. This runs so efficient. I actually have in both my Airstreams, 1961 Bambi and a 1997 Airstream B190, I have this same exact refrigerator. I love it. It was a game changer for me. Up top here, very deep storage. Again, large apply. You wanna put that espresso maker? Yep, it might fit right in there. Got some venting up top too. This right here is a fan for the bathroom and you push up on this plunger and push the little button and that turns the fan on to vent out the stale air in the bathroom and excess moisture. The way this bathroom works is when you're not using the toilet area, tuck the door away. You have more room to make the bed and get into the bed. When you're in the bathroom, you put the door this way. So you have more room to get changed into your clothing after you take a shower, towel down, and use the toilet. It's a great, great concept they do in this trailer. And there's magnets that keep it in place when you're camping and a latch when you're traveling, right? You don't want to hit a bump and the door to fly open. Back into the bathroom again. <clears throat> Up top, we have an LED light. There's a light switch outside, but just in case you're in here and you wanna shut the light off, you got another switch right here. Ocean Air roller shade behind the toilet. These are in my 1961 Bambi as well. The porcelain toilet we talked about earlier. Put your foot on the pedal partially that folds, fills up the bowl all the way down, flushes it. There's no water in this trailer. Toilet paper holder off to the side. The box underneath here is the black tank. The black tank is in the body above the floor, drains out through a discharge tube underneath, and is 18 gallons. You have 29 gallons of gray waste. That's your sink and shower waste. And you have 23 gallons of fresh water on board to use. And that will run to all these faucets and fixtures. In the shower, it's a ABS plastic material. It's uh, multiple pieces here, all caulked and overlapping. There's a ledge here. This is new. This ledge here will allow you to sit down if you wanted to shave your legs or you couldn't fit properly in here. You have plenty of room to wash yourself. There's a cubby here off to the side for your shampoo and conditioner. There's a residential quality shower faucet. This is nice because uh, I've seen different faucets available in the market. Most of them are just plastic for RVs. This is the same stuff that you'd buy from your house. This is a little bit different. This is made by Delta and this is the sprayer. So it's a little bit smaller, a little bit less flow so you can serve water a little bit better while you're camping. But once you get your temperature all set up, what's really cool about it is you can pause it 
and then you can lather up and you don't have to adjust and mess with your temperature. So it's really nice to have that. Uh, what I also like is there's a ledge up top here that you could rest the soap and your washcloth. And then you have a bar here when you're all done uh, you could leave your towel here, and then you put it up here to dry. And then if you want to dry your bathing suit, there's a clothesline that pulls across for light items here that you can lock in, and you have this whole area, because you're not in the shower all day. So it becomes a second storage area for a lot of our customers. And then the, the Nautilus type shower door slides across, locks in, I pull on it, flexes, and then when it rolls back, it dries off all the water in it and allows it to roll down the drain. These, these are great. I've seen them in a lot of RVs. Airstream's been using it for a very, very long time and customers are very happy with it. The flooring. This is vinyl flooring that goes throughout the trailer. And this is on top of a composite floor. So Airstream for many, many years has used tongue and groove plywood 5 8 inch with marine anti-wicking substance painted to the perimeter and uh, it was 8 by 4 sheets and it worked perfectly, does great. My 1961 Bambi has that same material. They now went to a one piece composite floor which has a little bit of insulating factor, better screw retention. So when they put the screws in and the screw snugs up, with expansion, contraction, and humidity change, that screw's not gonna come loose or back out. So you have less of a chance of a creak. On the other style floors, Airstream would measure and cut holes. This is all done in one piece. It's all CNC cut exact holes where everything needs to be, everything that needs to run through the floor is done. So a little bit more precision. If it gets wet, it's never gonna rot. It, it's mold and mildew resistant. Uh, there's so many great benefits to this new composite flooring that they've been using for now two model years. So it's proven itself, people love it and people request it and it's standard on every single Airstream traditional travel trailer, Bambi all the way up to classic. Down here we have the battery converter charger. This converts AC current into DC current. So AC is your electrical, just like the fuse panel in your house. Uh, there is a test for your GFCI outlets. Yes, there is GFCI in here because there are kitchen and bathroom wet areas and outside outlet. And the trailer service coming in is 30 amps. You have 30 amps usable service. And that is broken down to a microwave outlet, electrical outlets, refrigerator, and air conditioner. That's a 13,500 BTU air conditioner on the roof. You would need a 30 amp RV electrical outlet to plug into to run your air conditioning and power up the refrigerator. If you are on a 20 amp or 15 amp outlet, like just like you'd have at home, Colonial Airstream gives you an adapter. We could adapt your barrel cord from a three prong 30 amp to a 15 amp three prong. But know that you would not be able to run your air conditioning unless you do an aftermarket Easy Start. Easy Start capacitors are available aftermarket through the dealer that you can modify your air conditioning and it allows it to start up at lower amps, which can allow you to run the trailer on a 15 amp uh, electrical outlet or a smaller 2200 generator. So this is something to think about that you could do as an upgrade. The 12 volt DC fuses, these are automotive ATC style fuses, they're all labeled here, but that would be for your stereo, your water pump, your fantastic fan, the lights, anything that runs off of DC battery voltage. The bottom portion here is a battery charger. So when we're plugged into electricity and I have the trailer turned on, I could charge the onboard batteries off the campground's electricity. And then under heavy load, like now, like we have every single light on the trailer, you'll never have that. You're only gonna have a few lights on. Um, this battery charger is gonna kick on. It's gonna throw out a little bit of heat. So there's a fan in there that's running very quietly to cool that battery charger down. Just wanna keep this area it's clear, a lot of people like to put dog beds here. Just make sure there is a buffer between that area here. In the vanity area, 
There's storage below. All the hinges are premium hardware. They're not only adjustable to square the door over time, but they're removable. You can take the cap off and unhook them and take the doors off completely. That's great if a technician ever has to get in here. Uh, it's easier for them to work on, which is gonna reduce the hours it needs to repair or replace something because they're not fighting these doors. These are J hooks or J latches that keep the door shut. So you could need, this one's about a seven pounds of pressure to pull that door open. Well, rest assured that door's gonna stay shut when you're driving. For the toilet paper in an RV, you wanna use something that's rated for septic tank safe or RV safe. That breaks down, you don't wanna use wipes in the bathroom and uh, you gotta use your discretion what you flush down the toilet, but you wanna follow campground protocols. So Colonial, we give you a starter package. And then there's deodorizer, odor eliminator for the black tank. This has lines here for different ounces and you would treat that 18 gallon black waste tank with a certain amount of dose per tank full. So not every time you use the toilet, but every time after you empty the waste, you wanna retreat the next uh, batch that's going in there. So we give you that as well. Large stainless steel sink here in the bathroom area, premium residential faucet, GFCI protected electrical outlet, medicine cabinet with mirror, and then there's a hook here for your washcloth or your, your sink towel. The tankless water heater, this has a Girard LP tankless water heater. When you turn it on, now there's no water in the system so I'm not gonna be running it, you could change your temperature setting. So I want to be at 124 degrees when it comes out of the faucet. Uh, so the water heater will run and get to that temperature. The trick is you need to put the faucet on all the way to the hottest setting. You're setting your temperature here on the water heater, not on the faucet. Just think about that. Uh, it's not like at home where you're mixing hot and cold. Y you set the temperature and that's what comes out. So uh, you always have to put it on the full hot in order to get the desired temperature. If you put it lower, it's not gonna, the flow sensor's not gonna sense how much water's coming through. It's not gonna turn the water heater on. So you're gonna get cold or lukewarm water. There's uh, light switches here that are dimmable. You could just tap the switches and you could hold them in and dim the lights down and tap it on and off and it, it will reset back up. Uh, and then the thermostat here in the bedroom, why don't we switch spots? <clears throat> I could change this, uh, you know, right now this panel is on but there's no systems on. I could change the mode. I could go to cool, which will be air conditioning. And I could change my temperature setting up and down, and then I have the fan on auto. So it's automatically gonna sense the interior temperature and adjust the fan speed based on how, how fast it needs to cool the trailer. And there's an hourglass because it's trying to figure it out right now. You can manually change the fan speed uh, over here to low. And whatever you do, there's about a five second delay until it reacts up top. I could also change it to medium and I could change it to high. So you have three different speeds or you could just switch back to automatic and it will figure it out. It will come on when it needs, get to your temperature and shut off. Kick back on when it needs to. If you put the fan on low, medium, high, the fan will just run all day long. The compressor will kick on and off as it's needed. Uh, one zone in this trailer, but this is a multi-zone thermostat. And that same company, MicroAir, that makes the Easy Start for air conditioner makes thermostat replacements that you can take this Dometic out and plug in one of their thermostats and then you can control the thermostat with your phone, your smartphone. Pretty cool stuff. It's a bolt-on replacement. A little bit of modification trimming, but that's a new thing that's available now. You could program and you could set up this thermostat to come on and off as needed and long and, long, and you could set your clock here. Uh, you, you could uh, change from Fahrenheit to Celsius and then you could see what your inside temperature is. It's 84 degrees in this shop today. Uh, it's a warm day out there, uh, but it will, it's gonna get the trailer down to our temperature pretty quickly. Uh, let me just shut this system down. So I can move on to some more things. Uh, back to the kitchen area, we started here. Uh, when you go to the Caravelle, it has a higher BTU 
cooktop here. So you have more bigger flames. So that's why it has the cooktop ventilation and the Bambi doesn't. The Bambi uses this as the cooktop ventilation. Uh, but you just spin it to whichever you want. Uh, I'm gonna hold it down and that sparks. And this is uh, the front burner here and it'll ignite. There's no propane in this trailer currently. And then I could turn the back one on. All right, and you go to the, the light setting right here, and then that'll fire up and you can adjust your flame accordingly. And these grates are removable so you can clean it better. And uh, uh, I, I like that cooktop. It's simple, it doesn't take up a lot of space, it gives you more counter space for other items here. The Moen faucet has a pull out sprayer. This, some people use as a cutting board, but it gives you more counter space and covers that. If you have dirty dishes, you can hide it if you have a guest in. And this little mat rolls up and uh, it gives you access to the drain and it's a contour sink. But I like that little bottom rest thing. The convection microwave, uh, just like a regular microwave you are familiar with in your house, except that it has an electrical element up top, like an electric oven in the house and a fan in the back that will circulate hot air around your food. It's convection. It uh, will brown things, it will cook things faster, a little bit more evenly, a little bit more efficient. So you have a choice of whether you wanna use the microwave portion or the convection. And you can also broil and grill inside of it. Uh, these are great and Airstream's been using convection microwaves for a long time in their travel trailers and motorhomes. Down here we have a drawer and uh, that has the same type of J-latch, a little bit heavier. And then behind it, if anybody, a technician ever needed access, you squeeze the drawer glides and then the, the drawer will come right off. And that gives you access to the water pump and the siphon tube here for winterization. So you undo that, it's tied up right now. Stick that in a jug of antifreeze, turn the valve, and that will siphon RV antifreeze, non-toxic antifreeze for your water system as part of the winterization procedure. And uh, it's something that you want to do very carefully and follow all the steps that's in the owner's manual so you protect your plumbing when you get below freezing. This trailer does have heated tanks. The tanks are heated when the furnace is on. When the, the 16,000 BTU furnace kicks on that ducts air into the room here but also ducts air down into your tank chamber which is an insulated chamber that surrounds the tank circulates that hot air gives you about a seven degree boost in temperature inside the tank giving you protection from those unexpected drops in temperatures overnight when you're camping it's not meant to be a four season, I'm gonna go camping when it's 10 degrees outside uh, with water on board. It's just for those unexpected drops overnight. So you're not panicking and packing up and draining and leaving and going home. Uh, in here, you can see where those tank heaters are, where the furnace ducts run down through the floor into the tank chamber. And then this is the composite deck flooring material without the vinyl flooring. So you could see it a little bit better in there. Uh, but Airstream, these technicians, uh, we have a lot of Airstream certified technicians here. Actually, every one of my technicians is. And they love working on the Airstreams because they're just so easy to work on. Everything's easy to access. Airstream is extremely mindful when they design these trailers on a technician and service standpoint. Combination LP and carbon monoxide detector on board that's hardwired to your battery. So if you have a propane leak or carbon monoxide on board, this will alert and alarm you to let you know that to get out of the trailer and figure out what's going on because it's harmful to you. There's also a smoke detector on the ceiling that has a nine volt battery built into it uh, that you have to do change periodically. Six, every six months I would do when you change your clocks. And there's a fire extinguisher here by the door. Emergency exit we talked about before and all the glass is safety glass. So Airstream is extremely mindful when it comes to safety and, and practices all the safety specifications that RVII requires a manufacturer to do. It's a little bit different than homemade RVs or RVs that aren't mass produced. They don't might not follow the same RVAA guidelines. Uh, also, there's a lot of electrical components in here that are UL listed, which is important for your safety as well. These are two furnace ducts. This is an area for ventilation behind the cabinet. And then you have a civil war organizer in here. This is equipped as a solar charging system. I highly recommend every, every single one of our customers take that option. 90 watt panel on the roof, 
160 amp hours total of AGM batteries. But this is the Victron Energy solar display, and there's a solar controller, MPPT, uh, multi-point tracking controller on board. And you could set this up uh, and go through all the different um, uh, energy selections on board with this solar controller. And then there's also things you can do aftermarket and make it uh, hook up to your phone if you wanted to do it through Bluetooth. There's components you could buy to upgrade that controller to do that. This was inverter control we talked about this before. Let's go to the sea level two tank monitoring system. This allows you separately from the solar to see your battery, just to see how much battery voltage you have. We have 13.6. We're under charge right now, we're plugged in. Fresh Freshwater tank is at 0%. That 23 gallon freshwater tank, as you fill it up, you'll see the percentage go all the way up to 100. The gray waste tank is at 5%. There's a little bit of water in the sink drains right now, and that could go up to 100%, and the 18 gallon black waste tank is at 0%. So you'll know when it's time to empty these items based on the percentage level. The water pump switch is here, so if you're hooked into campgrounds, uh, city water connection that supplies water pressure to all your faucets on board but does not fill your 23 gallon fresh water tank uh, it bypasses it and you have endless supply of their water when you're not hooked up to a campgrounds uh, water cable you could then turn on your water pump after you fill the fresh water tank you can turn the pump on the pump will siphon water out of that tank and give you pressure to each one of your faucets and the pump will then shut off when it's the system pressurized. Once you turn on a faucet, the pump will know and see the drop in pressure and kick the pump back on to give you adequate water pressure. Always leave the pump off when you're hooked up to city water connection and leave it off when you're towing. If you left this on and this faucet jostled and something hit that handle and turned the faucet on, now you're driving down the highway for an hour and you got 23 gallons of water flowing throughout your trailer. Best practice to follow the checklist. If you go to support.airstream.com you could select your model. Airstream has a tremendous amount of information on there for an owner. After you get your orientation, the walkthrough, and overnight stay at Colonial Airstream, if there's additional questions or things you wanna review, you could go there. You could even go there before you buy an Airstream and see everything you need to know about the trailer if you haven't watched this video. Uh, over here, we have full blackout curtains that go all the way across the front. The front window opens all the way out. There is a rock guard that protects it and is down uh, when you're towing, but when you're not towing, you lift that up and open the window. These windows up front are tinted and so are the rock guards that are on board. These are the two speakers as part of the stereo. The subwoofer is underneath the dinette. Uh, the cushions are beautiful. I mean, the work and craftsmanship that Airstream does and their stitching, the foam density, is gonna be quite different. Most RVs, the foam would be thinner, the material would be stitched a little bit different. Airstream takes the time and care and love to build beautiful products that are gonna last a very, very long time. And you could see the pride when you look at the cushions, when you look at the cabinets and the fitment and materials that Airstream uses and all the standard features you get in Airstream, it's unbelievable. And I've been selling Airstreams for 19 years now. I love Airstream. I have two of my own. I've had many others throughout the years. It, it, it's quite different. It's very special, and I'm a proud owner. This area here is a wine rack or whatever, whatever you want to put in there. I have customers that put dog food bags in there and put dog treats and dog and pet stuff and cat stuff. Um, the dinette table is a plywood table with laminate with a rubber edge banding on the side. And what I'm gonna do now is, uh, you know, we don't need to turn on the TV and the Blu-ray. I put these away and I'm gonna show you how to fold this down easily. Unsnap these from the wall, flip them like this. Then you lift up the back, flip it like that. Boom, boom, right? Easy. This side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now you have the cushions out of the way, you just lift up on the front of the table. There's some cleats in the wall that keep it in place. Just lift up easily, push the leg up, store it. There's some rubber grommets. When you swing down the table, that sit and center the table between the two benches. Now that you have that down, you just separate the cushions. This wedge you can stuff away underneath. 
or you can use them as a backrest or a headboard or footboard. You lay these down. Ninety-one by forty. On this side, there is access here to get to additional bulk storage. You know that toolkit that you have, bottled water, things that you don't need to get to all the time. You can put right in here. And then this is a service access for the solar controller. A lot of wirings in here, so you don't want to store things in that one. Over here by the door. There's some light switches. So you have dimmable lights inside that we talked about and there's an outside porch light and the new battery disconnect for 2022. So it's just like the old one, instead it's a push button style instead of a toggle up and down. And then there's lights underneath this cabinet that you just push up and down and they're directional. All right, now that we've finished the inside, let's take a walk around the outside. That part will be quick. See this electrical outlet here? Airstream thinks of everything. This is a good spot to charge things and plug things in. They give you an outlet up there. Rubber bumper here, so on your way out, if you bump your head, you have some cushion there. The floor, they give you this uh, extruder aluminum piece here. It allows you to sweep it out. You know how much sand and dirt gets in the trail? Even if you take your shoes off, you walk around the campground, it goes in your shoe and it goes in your sock and you get out of the, in the trail, you're still gonna get dirt inside. So very easy to clean out and sweep out. Oh, and look at this, a trash pail right here by the door. So when do you need trash? While well, you're in the kitchen or you're outside. Put it right there, makes it easier. The aluminum step, when you're done using it, just kick it away. When you wanna use it, pull it back out, that easy. Step light here, beautiful. Alcoa aluminum exterior, belt line protection for the two seams here, heavy duty grab handle at the entry door. Look at this extruded aluminum frame around this door. I wish my 1961 had that, it was just different back then. Uh, but if water got in behind the door, it's gonna run down and it's, this is tapered, so it's gonna run right out. And there's grip tape here so you don't slip out the door. This has a 90th anniversary badge because it was built between January 1st, 2021 and December 1st, 2021. That's 90 years for Airstream. This swings around, locks in place, TIG welded, stainless steel hinges, six rivets on each hinge. Heavy duty gutter rail above the door allows the water to run around the door instead of on top of it. Screen door guards come in a caravel, they don't come on a Bambi. This is your cargo carrying capacity sticker that tells you how much cargo you have left. Remember you start off with a thousand pounds without any factor options. Um, and it's, it's pretty close to that right now with the way this one is built. But as you add things to the trail, you get to deduct and do the math and figure out how much cargo you have left to carry. Uh, screen door gasket. This door is insulated. Airstream uses all the way around the shell of the trailer, equal bat insulation, flex foil insulation below the floor. Heavy duty lock and deadbolt. Two separate keys, not common keys. These are special for Airstream and Airstream owners. They all have different keys. Look at that, bank vault shut sound, I love it. It's never gonna get old, 19 years selling Airstreams, I still love that sound. And a latch here to keep the door from blowing around on a windy day. Electrical outlet behind the entry door, GFCI protected, that will only run when you're plugged into shore power to campground. Heavy duty cast aluminum hinges at the entry door and then the whole underbelly is enclosed in aluminum and the tanks are heated like we talked about before. 225, 75, R15, load range E, Goodyear endurance tires, recommended max inflation at 80. You wanna go less than that if, unless you're gonna completely load the trailer up. Lug nut torque, make sure you follow those after 1025 and 50 miles after removing the tire and putting it back on, pull over and check the torque. It's very important. I'm a cyclist. I road bike all over New Jersey. The most common thing I see on the side of the road to find work gloves all over are lug nuts. They're everywhere. People's cars lose lug nuts. It's very important to check the lug nut torque, especially on the travel trailer. Uh, I'll leave it at that. 
Tire pressure, check that. Make sure you check that before every trip. When you get stopped to get gas, come out, check your tire pressure. Very important. You can get TPMS monitoring systems aftermarket. That's a nice thing to do. Get the ones that you replace the whole valve stem with and you get a monitor in your vehicle that will alert you to let you know your tire pressure went low. Uh, the porthole windows in the bedroom, beautiful medallion for the Caravel logoing. Stabilizer jacks, all four corners. See this thing sticking out here? Well, this has heavy duty jacks. On the Bambi, you're not gonna see that. It's in further. They're a little bit lighter duty jacks, a little bit lighter in weight themselves. Gerard tankless water heater. This is the access panel for service. You could turn it on and off from here. So if you wanted to disable it completely so no one could turn it on and off inside, you could turn the switch off here. And then there's no tank, so the winterization procedure is pretty simple for this. Zip the awning. I have dozens of videos on the awning and how it operates. You can watch one of those separately. Uh, it's very easy to work. We just did a service update video on how to operate the awning as well. Around back, uh, the Caravel has double stacked LED lights. The Bambi would just have one single light back here. This is the back bumper I talked about before you get on the Caravel, not on the Bambi. The frame sits out longer. There's a longer frame which supports this so you can put storage back here. All right, and then you get the beautiful polished aluminum bumper with the special caps on the end for protection and a mat inside of it. So you could throw items that are allowed to get wet like wheel chocks and blocks of wood and power cords in here. Your stuff that you want to keep dry, you put them in the trunk. And this is a lockable lift and twist, right? That's how you open it. And when you twist it and push down, look how it sucks that door shut tight up against these heavy duty gaskets. And if that one gasket wasn't enough. Look, they have double layer here. If the door is soaking wet, you're out here in the pouring rain, you close it, any water that gets in will run into this rail and drain out instead of getting into the body. And this is insulated too. It's just not a door. It's got insulation in it. Uh, new for 2022, if you look in here, they made this compartment deeper. It's deeper than it was last year. Uh, and they give you a little rubber mat. So you can throw a hitch bar. There's a lot of stuff in here. It's got a light to illuminate this area at night. Your PEX tubing lines all in there, the drain lines, the vents, everything runs through there. It's very easy to get to for service access. License plate bracket with light. Uh, I'm gonna close this rear window from the outside. You gotta make sure you latch these things when you're driving. You don't want this flying open on you. Uh, very important. Uh, this little strap rolls down. And now I could pull down the awning and release these legs from the little cups. And you can see there's a little design on this awning. Little stripes here. This is all umbrella. This stuff is excellent. I see customers with 1960s Airstreams with the original Sunbrella awnings. It's uh, uh, fantastic to see how well they hold up. And look what happens when you roll it up. It has a metal guard protection built into it uh, that keeps it weather tight. Airstream lettering up here, nice and bold. Everybody knows it's an Airstream, but Airstream's showing you that, you know, we're proud. This is an Airstream travel trailer. Uh, backup camera standard on every single traditional travel trailer from the Bambi all the way up to the Classic. Comes with a monitor, five inch monitor that you put in your tow vehicle, you plug it into a 12 volt socket. You have to turn on your parking lights or headlights. If your vehicle is set to automatic headlights and it's daytime, your backup camera will not work. What's nice about this camera is just leave it on when the whole time when you're driving. You can see what's going on behind you, get that peace of mind. So we call it a driving camera. Also too, by powering up the, your parking lights or headlights, these roof clearance lights and the side marker lights are gonna illuminate. Those are there on trucks specifically to let drivers know when you're coming over a hill that your load behind you is wider and taller than the vehicle in front. That's the whole reason for roof clearance lights and side marker lights. Put them on, leave them on. It's gonna be safer. People are gonna see you better when you're towing the travel trailer if you have those lights on. On this side, we have uh, the tool to operate the awning, right? So we're going to see that in another video, but I could use it for this one. I want to put away this window on it. I could, and I couldn't reach. I could roll it up and hold on. And this one's metal wrapped too. And then I could get to the lock and I stick that in and I could twist it and that locks it, prevents it from coming out when you're towing. The stabilizer jack tool, these are not leveling jacks. 
a lot of customers call and say, does it have leveling jacks? They confuse it with stabilizer jacks, which you crank down, and then when it hits the ground, you can go about another half turn. You're not lifting the trailer off the ground. You're just taking the bounce out of the walk when you walk around inside. That's it, a half turn. If you want to level the trailer, you have an electric hitch jack up front. You can level it front to back. Side to side, you could use leveling blocks, They're like little Legos, and you could stack them and pull one side of the tire up off the ground higher to keep you level. And you'll know your level when you bring a glass of water with you and put it on the countertop, or you bring an actual carpenter's level inside. Or if it's just comfortable, when you lay in the bed, if it feels like you're rolling to one side or head rush, you know you're not level. And then they give you this multi-tool, which just has different size sockets on it. What's nice about this tool is this is a half inch drive socket. So if you have a socket kit, you could use this as a tool to break lug nuts loose and loosen and tighten all different things. Uh, the, the cable and satellite connections here, you bring your own park cable, hook it in here, or portable satellite dish. Uh, there's a light to eliminate the dump station area at night. So the black tank is the big black handle, gray tank is a small gray handle. So the black discharge is here, it wires together with the gray. You take the cap off, these, these are on nice and tight, you don't want this coming off on the road. All right, and then you take your waste hose, they give you a really nice waste hose. This thing, uh, this thing just keeps stretching out. You know, never do this once you use it. You know, stuff will be flying everywhere. But once you get it out, you snap it on right here. Okay, and then you can shorten it, right? And then the campground connection will have either threaded, you know, you could just screw this around and thread it in, or they're stripped and there's dirt in them and you just slip the donut in and you slip your waist hose into it. And then you snap this on, nice and secure, right? Make sure it's all tight. And then you're gonna discharge the waste tank. So you just pull this handle straight out, a uh, little bit of water, and that will discharge the black tank. And now all the toilet waste and toilet paper Whatever you put down the toilet is coming through and something's gonna stay in your waste hose. Now what do you do? You wanna put the thing away, you wanna clean it. So you close the black tank, you open your gray tank, which is shower and sink waste, soapy water. You pull this handle straight out. It discharges through the same area. That will clean and flush out your waste hose so it's cleaner when you go to put it away. Now, you're all done. You want to leave the camper and you're going to bring it home. You're going right home to the storage facility to drop it off. You probably want to get rid of that residual waste that's in the tank. So after you empty the black tank, you leave everything hooked up, leave the handle open, you hook up to this sore flusher with a regular garden hose. Try not to mix your freshwater hose with this hose. Keep them separate. Screw it on, turn on the faucet, under pressure, it'll spray the walls of the tank down and get that residual waste out of your tank. If you practice that exercise each and every time that you are done camping, you're putting in storage, your tank most likely won't smell. The new smart plug connection that Airstream has is easy to unplug the trailer. You just undo the clamps and you unplug it. Instead of the twist lock and lining the threads up, it's just easier. And because these spades are so large, you have more point of contact. So less of a chance, less resistance, less of a chance is heating up and melting. So we love the smart plug. Now the smart plug has a 30 amp end on it. So we're plugged in here. This is about a 25 foot power cord. So we're plugged into a 30 amp. So this is just like what you're gonna see at a campground. But if I get home and I wanna plug the trailer in, I could use this adapter and I could plug it into a regular household electrical outlet. And then just know as the trailer sits, you cannot run your air conditioning off this outlet. It will pop the breaker in your house. If you get the easy start, soft start capacitors aftermarket through service, then you should be able to do that. Over here, we have the city water inlet. So when you go to a campground, you wanna hook up to their water pressure, you could use your fresh water hose and hook it up to the campground side and then you just screw that in 
and this has a water pressure regulator built into it, protects the trailer from high water pressure. At night when no one's showering and there's no water use, the pressure could get high at a campground. You're protected. But again, it doesn't fill your fresh water tank, it supplies water to your faucets. In the wheel well here, there's a drip tube for your air conditioning. So a lot of times people, brand new to Airstream, they get their walk through, you go to the first campground, people come over, neighbors come over and say, hey, I love your Airstream, but why is it leaking water? Well, it's in a drip tube on the tire because this is gonna be a small puddle area. Most RVs, the air conditioner runs down the roof, down the sides, leaves streaks and splashes everywhere. Um, so this is just a little bit better way of controlling that condensation. And just know it's gonna be in the wheel well on most models. Outside utility shower, you hot and cold water, you could hang the wand up, you could hose off your dog, your feet, you could hang up a little shower curtain aftermarket if you wanted to. Uh, but it's nice that every trailer has that. This is the potable water fill for the 23 gallon fresh water tank. Take the cap off, stick the hose in, when the tank's full, it relieves out of here. This is not a pressurized fitting, this is a loose fitting to allow air to escape. You don't need to put the hose on full blast either. Put it on low and wait for it to fill. Cooktop ventilation, you could put these little latches on to prevent it from flapping around when you're towing on the highway. This is the furnace and the furnace exhaust. VIN plate with tire information, tire pressure information. Um, this has a spare tire, I'll show you that, where that is. Where's the tools for a spare tire? Well, you could use that multi-tool and get the correct socket. Where's the jack? Well, it's in your truck. The tow vehicle you're towing this is rated to tow the trailer. The jack should be rated to tow a, lift up a portion of the trailer. And underneath on both back sides, left and right, there's a sticker that says jack with an arrow that points to a metal plate, which indicates that's where the frame is. If you put the jack anywhere, it's all aluminum underbelly. You're gonna punch a hole through and punch a hole through the floor. So you gotta follow the procedure specifically where to jack it. The waist hose was stored in this tube. This, this you could snap on and it fits uh, about a 10 to 15 foot hose. Heavy duty stainless steel wrap protectors. We mentioned it before. It's a feature of the Caravel, not available in the Bambi. You could do it aftermarket on a Bambi at the dealer level. It's between $1,800 and $2,000 for the kit installed. That's part of the price difference when you go from a Bambi to a Caravel. So if you start saying, oh wait, the electric hitch jack, Bambi doesn't have one, it's a manual, Caravel has this. You add this, you add this, you start adding these things, you're at the price of a Caravel, you might as well just go with the Caravel. Two and five sixteenth inch ball with a Dem Demco coupler, 550 pounds tongue weight, we give you a hitch coupler lock to lock this so no one could lift it up and get a bowl underneath it. 11,000 pound safety chains, you crisscross when you hook them up to your hitch receiver. Trailer breakaway cable, I mention every vehicle, uh, every video, but it still happens. People pull this out and leave it out. Now your brakes are on full blast. A lot of voltage going to them. It's gonna drain your battery rapidly. In hours, it will completely deplete your whole battery system. So never pull this out. This is just for emergency. If the, this is gonna be attached to your hitch receiver on your vehicle. If the trailer came detached when you're towing down the highway, this would pull out and lock the brakes so the trailer doesn't pass you in the shoulder. Uh, electric hitch jack has a manual override tool that you could stick on if you had complete battery failure and you had to get out of there. You can manually crank the trailer up and down using this. But since this is electric hitch jack, you normally just use it like this. Most important thing with these is wait for the motor to stop before you reverse the direction. A lot of people hit the button the wrong way and say, oops, I meant to go this way while the motor's still moving. You could pop a fuse and the fuse is built in behind the battery box. Light outside to illuminate your hitch area at night. And then when you open this up, you have two 20 pound propane tanks. Now the whole reason for the 20 pound bottles is not only to reduce the hitch weight of the trailer, but to make it easy for customers to get propane on the road. These bottles, you're gonna start off with these bottles, but when you go to get propane next, you're gonna get the exchange bottle at the propane, and next time you're gonna get a different bottle. So just exchange these when you get gas instead of getting them refilled. You can get them refilled if you want, but those places are harder and harder to find. To undo the cover to get the bottles out, you undo this wing nut here, 
allows the cover to come off, allows this clamp to come loose. Undo the bottle here and take it out and get it filled or exchanged. Now, when the both the bottles are hooked up and on, there is an automatic switch over. So right now, if, I, if I, this bottle was off and this bottle was on, I have the arrow pointing to this bottle, it's gonna run off this bottle. When this bottle gets empty, there's an indicator light that'll be red to let you know that that bottle's empty. Then you could shut that off and manually switch it to this one and run off of this one. If you have them both on, it will automatically internally switch to the bottle that has propane. So you don't have to do anything. The only thing you'd find out is when you're empty, you have no propane. This is a propane quick disconnect port. Low pressure. There's a difference between a residential barbecue grill than a camping grill. A bar residential barbecue grill, well, you could hook that right up to one of your propane tanks. Easy, done. If you have a small camping low pressure grill, there's a quick disconnect port at the bottom of the trailer here. Now you take the cap off and you slip this in, slip the collar back, and turn on the propane valve here. This would automatically already been hooked up to your grill. And they give you enough length to keep you out of trouble, right? So it's hooked up there, you're about right here, you can have your grill. This isn't long because a lot of people would be, oh, it's raining out, I'm gonna go put it underneath my awning and then they have a fire. So it's long enough to, so you keep it clear from areas that you're not supposed to be cooking underneath. Back behind the propane tanks is the battery box. There's a metal box on the Caravel, It'll be plastic on the Bambi, which means it's lockable on the Caravel, not on the Bambi. These batteries are the 80 amp hour AGM batteries. You can see how they're hooked up and the fuses and the clamp to keep them in place, but there is no maintenance on these batteries. You just have to remember with an AGM battery to never discharge it below 50%. Simple. If you bring it below 50%, you risk damaging your battery. So be mindful, be careful, and understand the limitations of your battery system. If you do an aftermarket upgrade to the Lithium Power Plus, it's a dealer installed option. So you order the trailer from Airstream, it will not have lithium batteries, it's not an option. Once it gets to the dealer, you could upgrade to the lithium batteries. They're lithium iron phosphate, Airstream's currently using Balborn batteries with the heat into them. Depending on when your Airstream was made, would determine the additional equipment you would need to make that system work. The more modern recent trailers have the newer battery uh, charger and the new solar controller, so that's less cost to upgrade the batteries. The older trailers, you do have to replace some additional components and additional cabling. But with the lithium iron phosphate batteries, I could put two 100 amp hour batteries in the same compartment. And those batteries you could run down to zero or 10% without harming them. So you have more usable battery energy if you get the lithium iron phosphate. You also reduce the tongue weight by a few pounds, not a lot. You're gonna reduce it by about 25 pounds total. And then those batteries are a little bit different. This trail you can plug in and use the solar anytime you want. When you get to those batteries, you, have, you cannot charge, you should not charge them when it's below a certain temperature threshold. So there's heat built into them. So there's a switch that would be added to allow the battery's heaters, which is just like a heated seat in a car, to turn on to bring the battery up to the proper temperature so it could be charged. So there are a few extra steps that you have to remind. And then the charging from your vehicle is a little bit different. Most people that tow a travel trailer have an alternator charge lead built in to charge these batteries batteries when you're driving. If you wanted to do that, you need a DC to DC charger to make that work. It's a special component that goes in between the two for the two different technologies. Off to the side here is a solar quick disconnect port. So you have 90 watts on the roof, you could do a dealer installed additional 90 watts. But if you wanted more solar or more sun, you could get a portable panel and plug it in. This is the VIN plate of the trailer, and then this is the spare tire arm. I drop this down in every video, but there's a clip, a pin, you drop it down, and the tire's right there. It's full size, but instead of the beautiful aluminum rim, it has a steel wheel built into it. Well, I hope you found this video very informative and very helpful. Uh, we're very proud to have the first 2022 Airstream Caravel 19CB 
at our dealership. Now this one's already sold, just like mostly everything at this point, but we do have uh, available orders for this spring that you could order today and take delivery. Uh, my name is Patrick Botticelli. I'm here at Colonial Airstream. You can visit our website at colonialairstream.com. You could call us at 800-265-9019. We'd love it if you could follow us on social media under the Colonial Airstream name on Instagram and Facebook. If you want to follow me and my colonial adventures i'm colonial patrick hope you enjoyed this video please like this video comment share and subscribe i love it and we'll see you soon